Hey, Kimberly Olson here, and I'm coming to you from Arizona. I'm on a mission to bring families, bring parents home to their, their kids and strengthen families. Now, I, in this video, I'm gonna share with you just how the compare snare might be sabotaging your success, because I know it's done mine in the past, and I'll share with you what the compare snare is in just a moment. But first, real quick, Tonight, I had the opportunity to go to a church function. Now, the, the religious organization that I belong to has one of the largest women's organizations in the world. And we get together once a month on an evening, just the women, and be able to, you know, the idea, it's called enrichment, it's to enrich you know, our minds, be able to connect with other women, and you know, connect on our purposes. Well. In the last several months or so, I've really kind of felt disconnected from, from the women at my church. I felt like my purposes weren't completely in line with theirs, and my, I just felt a disconnect. It's kind, of, it's kind of something I really can't put completely into words, but just know that I, <laughs> I more and more felt like I, I didn't want to go, and I had that feeling tonight, and in fact, my husband and my kids were all, Mom, are you going to go? Are you going to go? Because they all knew that it was tonight. And I was like, I don't think I'm going to go. I have too much to do. You know, I have a lot to do. I was working on you know, getting an email sent out to my subscribers. And so I said, all right, I'm going to finish this up. And something just inside said, you need to go tonight. And so I went with not really any intentions in mind. I was just going to support, you know, support the effort, support the group. I knew the theme was going to be about being happy, and I, I just thought, well, I'll go. <laughs> and what happened tonight just really solidified in me something that I've worked on over the past weekend in Chicago at our, our awesome event there in Chicago, and it just brought home everything and encompassing everything that I had learned about myself, everything that I had realized in the last several months, really. And one thing that they really talked about was the compare snare. What is the compare snare? And I, I'm not gonna take credit for all this information. Uh, a good friend, um, Melissa, shared this information at the, at the event, um, at the, the meeting tonight. And compare snare is, especially as women, something that we do. We compare ourselves to the other women. Who are the other women? Because they're all around us. The other women are in the line at the grocery store. They're at our church. They're in our neighborhood. They are everywhere around us. And who are they? Well, when you're standing in line in the grocery store and you know, you're, you've got yesterday's ponytail and holes in your jeans and stains on your shirt from dinner last night and the woman behind you in line is dressed to the nines and has the matching accessories and handbags and her, her hair is perfectly in place buying her milk for tomorrow's great cereal breakfast and we all know you should get dressed up to go buy your milk at, at Walmart. <laughs> but don't we compare ourselves? Come on ladies, think about it. You're in line and someone like that walks up behind you and you're thinking, oh my gosh, and I look like this. And how many times do we compare ourselves to the woman down the street who makes homemade bread instead of buying bread from the store? Or the woman that has a weekly craft night and she dreams up these imaginal, amazing crafts and has a craft night with all her friends once a week. And we compare ourselves to all the things we think we should be doing. And then we feel really lousy about who we are. And let's take go another step. What happens then, so to make ourselves feel better, sometimes we start thinking, well, and I know I've done this, I've done it myself. We start thinking about the other, other women. So we think about the ones that, you know, maybe we're a little bit doing better than they are. So for instance, the woman who is screaming at her kids as they're crying through Walmart, or the woman who cusses at us as we accidentally cut her off, pulling into the parking lot, or, you know, the woman who takes her kids to McDonald's every night for dinner. So then we start to feel, well, I'm doing better than that. But then when we really got thinking about it, it doesn't make us feel any better because we realize that, you know, 
Maybe the woman who takes her kids to McDonald's every night has a health problem that we don't know about, and she's not able to make dinner for her kids. Maybe, you know, the woman screaming at her kids just had a really bad day. Maybe they have a financial problem or their husband lost their job and they don't know what they're going to do. So we start to realize that other people have issues that maybe we don't understand. And we're comparing ourselves to all these other people. And what we need to realize is it's not about who's better than you or who's worse than you. It's about you. It's about being the best you that you can be. Well, as I said, my name is Kimberly Olson. I'm not Melissa from tonight. I actually, she's one that I would compare myself to as being on a higher plane than me. You know, I have other mentors, other wonderful Layla. I compare, used to compare myself to Layla and thinking, wow, if I could just be more like her. But I'm not Layla. I'm not Melissa. I'm Kimberly. And I'm the best Kimberly that I can be. Now, some days I have bad days, but I'm not the best Kimberly I can be. But each day I strive to get myself a little bit better. So it's not about comparing ourselves, because what happens when we compare ourselves? What do we tend to do? Think about that for just a minute. When you're comparing yourself to someone else, typically we're comparing our weaknesses with someone else's strengths. Now isn't that like comparing apples and oranges? They're not the same. Because something that they do that you think is extraordinary, chances are there's something that you do that they're looking at that they think is extraordinary about you. The way we view ourselves is not usually accurate. There is an awesome, it's an amazing campaign that Dove is doing. And I don't normally put a plug in just for random companies, but Dove is doing this campaign called Beauty Sketches. And I want you to watch it. I'm actually going to put a link to their, to their video. But watch that video because it's going to, it, it'll amaze you. The way these women viewed themselves versus the way someone else viewed them was completely different. We take and we point out our flaws. When we look in the mirror, what do we see? We don't see bright, happy, gorgeous eyes. We see the crow's feet. We don't see cute dimples when we smile. We see laugh lines. You know, we point out all the things that we think are wrong about us, but someone else looking at us for the first time, they don't see those things. They see what's in your eyes. They see your laughter, your smile. They see beauty. They don't see all of the things that you've spent years worrying about. You are more beautiful than you think. You are stronger than you think. You have a power inside you that is more magnificent than anything you can, you've even yet to realize. Any of us. It's time to start tapping into that power. It's time to start being the most magnificent, wonderful you you can be. And one way to do that is through personal development. You know, definitely a huge, book that's transformed my mind is Psycho-Cybernetics. You should definitely look up that book. And just remember this, when you're doing anything, do it full out because when you take massive action, you become unstoppable.